Hi everybody! This week in Physics Lab, we'll be studying a two-dimensional collision as a ball is colliding with a floor. We'll need our standard equipment for video analysis. Namely, we'll need your cell phone that's set up to film the region where the ball is colliding with the floor. You'll need an object of known length that will sit in the frame. And then you'll need a surface to roll a ball horizontally off of, but so it will then fall down and bounce off the floor in a region that's going to be seen by the video camera. You'll want to set your camera up to record in slow motion, if possible, so we can get the data really at high precision when it's bouncing off of the floor. So we set this up. I've gone ahead and set up a ramp here so that I have a fairly well calibrated constant velocity as it's coming off the floor, and that allows me to make sure that it's always going to be in the frame of my bounce. So the experiment is simple. Set up your camera to record in slow motion, then roll the ball off the table and film one bounce. So now we have a nice slow motion video of the ball bouncing on the floor. The next thing you're going to need to do is to look up the frame rate of your camera when it's running in slow motion mode. I found this in my camera settings where I see that it's filming at 240 FPS or frames per second. When you load your movie into Logger Pro, you'll want to use the information about the frame rate of your movie to adjust the time axis. You can do that in the Movie Options menu or by right-clicking on the movie and selecting the Override Frame Rate. I'm going to use the information that I found that it's 240 frames per second. Next, I'll carry out my video analysis. When you are completing your Logger Pro video analysis, you will want to make sure that you set your coordinate system to the point when the ball hits the ground uh, as the origin. So if we go through in my video here, we find that there's this one frame here where the ball is relatively motionless and in contact with the floor. I'm going to want to set my origin to be right there at the bottom where the uh, ball is touching the ground. So right about there. Uh, I've already gone ahead and done some center of, uh, center of ball calculations and tracked my uh, coordinates using the motion tracker. I've set up a coordinate scale as usual using my bubble level, and now I have a set of data here. Now I can take my Logger Pro data and just paste it into a Google Sheet. I've already prepared this with the template table that I want here in uh, submission, so I can go ahead and uh, space that out and make my spreadsheet look neat. And then what I'm going to do is just use spreadsheet operations to calculate all of these quantities for the position that I actually care about. I think the easiest thing to do is to actually look at the y values of your data to find the point when it's in collision. And you can go ahead and, uh, for example, make plots of uh, different quantities to sort of select when you have uh, good frames to look at. So if I go ahead and insert a chart, um, this actually is a reasonable set of values. I'll turn these into scatter plots. And I can see that I have fairly good uh, straight lines until the collision for my uh, x data here in blue and my y data here in red. So of course, switched in colors from what Logger Pro has shown us. Uh, but it shows us that outside of that first collision, we could pick any uh, pair of points. So I'm gonna go ahead and select, uh, look through my Y data, and I see that here at this point, we'll color it yellow, the Y data are at a minimum, and so that's the uh, point at which it's colliding with the ground. So I'm gonna take the two points before it and the two points right after it as my X and Y data, my initial and final. So I'll do this with spreadsheet operations by saying that the time that I want here is going to be, uh, time will be in seconds, and the value that I want is going to be, uh, T1 will be that entry, T2 will be the one right below it, and then right after it will be uh, T3, so that's going to be spreadsheet uh, entry A20 and spreadsheet entry A21. So this gives me the times corresponding to the points, and then I can go ahead and find the X and Y values corresponding to those. So I have um, my X value is going to be given in column B, so that's B17, 
B18, uh, B20, and B21, and then my uh, Y values are given in column C, so I can just enter those. Again, we want to avoid the point where we're actually doing the collision and look at the points before and after. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill in my units so my TA doesn't get angry at me. And then if I want to, for example, calculate the initial x velocity, I just go ahead and say, well, that's uh, x2 minus x1. And that operation needs to be in brackets uh, because, you know, math and orders of operations, and I'm going to divide that by t2 minus t1. When I do that, I get my initial x velocity. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the video analysis on the same four video frames, but using completely new coordinate system measurement and length measurement. What this is going to do is give me two independent measurements from the same data, and that's going to be used to establish an uncertainty. As after doing that, I established that my x uncertainty is about uh, two centimeters and my y uncertainty is about one centimeter in the data. So I've gone ahead and included those in the uncertainty values. And from there, I can use, for example, equation 10.13 in the lab manual to calculate what my errors in velocity are as just the error in the y value. So taking that one uh, divided by the time interval. So that would just be here minus here uh, times the square root of 2. Uh, and so that'll give me an uncertainty in my velocity measurement from the data that I'm collecting here. Ooh, it's pretty large. Uh, but this does show that I do need to do some rounding here. So uh, if we do this, we want to make sure that our final data point doesn't have as many decimal places. So I can just reduce the number of decimal places in the cell using these little buttons, increase and decrease decimal places up here. And of course, I only want one significant figure in the error and one significant figure in the measurement. Now, what's nice about this is that the spreadsheet preserves the underlying data. It's just displaying the number to the number of decimal places that you specify. If you make sure that you do that, then we can carry on with calculations using these values, and they will be calculated at full precision, but then you do the rounding after calculation at full precision to figure out what the final value is. So that's important. Always calculate at full precision, but then round to the uncertainty at the point where you display the data. All right, that should give you what you need to get started on this lab. Go ahead and complete the analysis in the spreadsheet and use that as a basis for your table that you'll upload to the E-Class quiz. You can fill out some the rest of the questions and answer the questions on the quiz using the information in your table. If you have any questions, don't forget to post onto the forum. Good luck.